Good morning, folks. Been a while since I shamelessly beat on cosmologists. Going to do that today. There's an outstanding study on solar forcing, and we've got a couple things to cover in space weather as well. We'll start there with the last 24 hours on our star. Not much in the way of flaring. The southern plasma filament begins to destabilize this morning, and there's a new sunspot group on the north. Of course, what most are waiting for is coming in the solar wind already, the CME from the X-class flare two days ago. NOAA expects that to impact tonight. I say it could be tonight or could be tomorrow. But either way, hopefully you can see there is a weaker coronal stream out ahead of the CME shockwave. And that is already engulfing the Earth this morning. KP index almost hit 5 already today, so we have a touch of preconditioning to the coming CME impact, which is expected to be minor. Here's a look at the southern filament beginning to destabilize. That eruption threat joins our watch of sunspots today since it is directly facing the Earth, and those sunspots just got more numerous as well. In addition to the larger spots on the north and south, a new active region is growing on the north now as well, top left. This one really started developing in just the last few hours. We'll be facing Earth over the weekend. Let's go to the articles, where James Webb broke the most distant galaxy ever seen record. While it is only mentioned very casually in the article, there remains the open question as to how such structures formed so early in the universe doesn't really comport with the timeline used in the cold dark matter and Big Bang model. And speaking of which, one of the key claims we made in our plasma cosmology movie from five years ago is the fact that galactic rotation curves, which mainstream scientists think indicate dark matter existence, have major problems. You can read more about that here, as they proclaim a significant challenge in the assumed science of the last few decades. Top story today is yet another one on atmospheric electricity being impacted by space weather, by solar storms. This is critical because on top of all the science showing how this is true, and on top of all the studies showing how it impacts clouds, rain, temperatures, lightning, wind, and storms, the atmospheric electrification weather modification technique is the newest and most robust in their stupid toolbox. So. How are they still going to claim these solar events don't impact the weather? We greatly appreciate your support. We're awaiting the minor to moderate CME impact. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.